Hi, I'm Roy Collin, and I'm the creator of the podcast. You can find everything about me and the five podcasts on bio.link forward slash podcaster, and you'll find it in the QR code there. I'd also like to thank my sponsors. If you or someone you know is struggling with anxiety and want to know how to be 100% anxiety free in six weeks without therapy or drugs, Daniel Packard Anxiety Solution Program Company offers a six weeks system that permanently solves anxiety at an astounding 90% success rate. People who join the program only pay at the end once they have clear, measurable results. If you're interested in learning more, go to permanentanxietysolutions.com where you can book a free consultation with Daniel. Do you have high blood pressure or want to get off the meds? Doctors are amazed at what Zona Plus can do. Get a $50 discount with my code ROY. Go to zona.com slash discount slash ROY and you see the QR code for all my sponsors down at the end. Quality Polish manufacturer of metal products for telecommunication and workshop equipment and other metals. If you'd like a brochure, you see it in the QR code and you just let us know if you would like a quotation shipped internationally and very competitive rates. I hope you enjoy this week's podcast. Welcome to the Crypto Podcast. You'll find all our episodes on CryptoPodcast.org. My guest is the Product Marketing Manager at Crypto at Token Metrics, but he's actually, I suppose you could call yourself a digital nomad because you've been traveling all around the world. But please, welcome to the show, Marcus Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, I'm quite the digital nomad. I do uh, live across multiple countries and crypto enables me to do that. So I'm very appreciative of what it's done for me. So I suppose we'll kind of delve into your kind of crypto journey and then it can kind of lead to why you're traveling so much. Yeah, sure. So I am... I'm an Australian, so I lived in Australia for most of my life. Um, I worked in the mining industry, not crypto, but in actual minerals. So um, just please don't get that confused. So I worked for most of my life. I did a couple of other things, um, had a very high paying job. Um, and then at work, people were talking about cryptocurrency. And I, I, I wasn't aware of it. I thought it was a scam, like I'm sure many people uh, led to believe when they first hear about it. And they just kept talking about they were making money. So I decided to put um, pretty much everything I had on a YouTube video, which basically said this would do a hundred X and it was a classic pump and dump. So I put all my money in and the next day I woke up, um, I was down 70% on my money. So I lost pretty much everything overnight. Now, most people would be, um, would say, this is a scam. I'm done. So what I thought, I actually thought, well, how come this happened to me? but everyone else is making money. So I was like, okay, I'm doing something wrong. So I had that mind state of I'm doing something wrong here. So I kept working um, and I started putting money into the market, money into the market. And then it just started going out of control. The numbers started to really increase. Um, I was learning a lot of things. I would lose money trying something new. Um, and then I would learn it, earn more money. And it got to the point where it wasn't making sense for me to continue working. And I knew this was more of a medium to short term because we're in the middle of a bull run. So I decided to leave Australia and reduce my taxes, but then COVID happened. So <laughs> um, I got stuck in Australia. Um, we were some of the strictest, especially my state, some of the strictest in the world. So I couldn't leave for two years, but the day that it opened, um, I flew out and moved to a country called Georgia, which is where I'm currently residing. Um, beautiful place. And I pursued crypto full time. I travel, I live in multiple different countries. And I was basically given the opportunity, I was working for myself and I was given the opportunity to work for a company called Token Metrics. And I always said to myself, I would never work for anyone but myself, except for Token Metrics. And funnily enough, I did get a job with Token Metrics. Um, yes. So that's a bit about myself. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, like, like there's a few things that ju just from kind of navigating the token metrics and like, there's a fantastic blog. And I know that you write on the blog as well. And not everybody has the ability of writing in a way that, especially in the crypto blockchain world, because sometimes, because I know when I was learning this first, I read a lot of books and it just bamboozled me and I just ran the other, other direction. But the way that you actually do the blog is you simplify it 
to make sure that once you're finished reading it, you totally get what you've like the, the, the title of the, the, the blog. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, we um, definitely cater to beginners especially because cryptocurrency is very confusing. I'm sure um, even myself, which has been full-time crypto for about four to five years now, um, it can be confusing with some things. So we try to really narrow it down in terms of the actual language and try to make you understand um, what to really look for and the educational content um, that we provide is really good like that. So I appreciate you um, <laughs> noticing that. No, very good. So, and there's one, because you, you mentioned about like the taxes in Australia. And like, I know that you did a blog on that. And I think a lot of people kind of don't think of that because there's some countries, there's no tax, there's other countries, it's like one year and then there's no capital gains or whatever, but there's software as well. So you might kind of just touch on the software and the kind of taxes just to make people aware of. Sure. So obviously, I'm definitely not a tax advisor. I can't comment too much in terms of the exact things. But for me personally, um, there are there's a really good um, YouTube channel called Digital Nomad. Um, Nomad Capitalist, sorry, Nomad Capitalist. Basically, he preaches about lowering your taxes. So if you can live between countries or you reside somewhere else, um, obviously it's a big it's a big commitment. I moved to a country not knowing a single person, didn't speak the language. Um, it was a huge jump. But I lowered my taxes. So coming from Australia, where you can pay up easily over 40% in tax, to now I lowered it to zero. Um, it's just a lot more of a freeing feeling um, to do that. So, And if you have software... There's definitely software you can use to help you with your taxes. Um, that's definitely a big thing. Um, but just for me personally, I really believe in just lowering the taxes so you can reduce a lot of that stress in your life. Um, it really is a good thing. Um, of course, sometimes you miss your home. Like uh, Australia, I don't actually feel like it's home anymore. I've, I've been living away from Australia for two years now. Um, it doesn't feel like home. I don't miss anything anymore. Um, there's a big world out there. So, and lowering the taxes and just the new environment really helps with that. And like with all the different software, because I know you mentioned like you're not a tax advisor, but to be honest with you, sometimes <laughs> they don't have your best interest at heart. So I'm, I'm convinced a lot of them get kickbacks for actually declaring the tax that you have to pay because there's times I, with different companies, I'm told oh, I have this tax bill and I kind of say, why can I do this, 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 and this? And I'll end up getting a tax rebate. You know, whereas they're not really telling you that. And I found that the majority of them are kind of like that. You have to ask, hey, can I do this? But with the software, I'm just curious, does the software connect back to anywhere that you're filling these in? Or is it it's just giving you tools that you then do your declarations? Yeah, a lot of it does um, give you the tools. So basically, it makes your life easier, especially with how cryptocurrency is kind of in a gray area for a lot of countries. Um, So they kind of follow the regulations and kind of do it for you in a sense that the government can't come knocking on your door again and give you a big fine. So that's the big one of the big benefits of those softwares. Um, I know there are some which are designed specifically for lowering it, um, but that depends on the country. A lot of it depends on the country that you're in as well. So some specialize in specific countries. And with kind of the regulation then, because you know we've seen what happened with FTX and kind of who was involved. What's your thoughts on regulation? I think regulation is great for the space. So I'm personally a bit more of a degenerate investor. That's what I like to call myself. I'm very high risk, high return. Um, that's what I like to do. But I understand that regulation is good, especially after we did see, um, we saw the collapse of Luna, which hurts a lot of companies. So you had Celsius going bankrupt yet. Then you had FTX following up um, a couple of months later. And that whole FTX debacle was blows my mind still to this day. Um, so the regulation is good for crypto. The only issue that I find with regulation is some countries in particular aren't going the right way about it and are making it harder to transact and um today was mentioned that um us is trying to ban cryptocurrency bitcoin again as we heard have heard multiple times um but the fact is it can't really be banned 
So I really hope that the regulation just allows it to become essentially as regulated as the stock market. But I do believe that cryptocurrency will get to the point where it will become similar to the stock market in returns as well. Because I, I like to ask people who they think created Bitcoin and just recently, because it's 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 very hard to kind of know what's going on. But the guy had put out a video saying that in 1996, the NSA had created the document. And I actually checked it out, found it, and it's actually written on Wikipedia. But some are then saying that, no, this has nothing to do with it. I'm not sure if you've heard about that, but I'm just curious who you think found it. <laughs> Is it an yeah, individual? So is it a government? Is it, it you know, is a group an individual? Of I, I've got to remember the name off the top of my head. I could be wrong. Um, Hal Finney, I believe. Um, he was a person that create. He, I think, he was in. I'm going back in a long time. I don't really follow Bitcoin much anymore. Um, but he was when they created um, the concept of Bitcoin. It was in a group. It was in a group chat. Um, and one of the people, I think it was Hal Finke. I, I have yeah, to no, confirm I it. His yeah, name. Yes. I, I, I haven't seen the article, but, but a few people have mentioned his name. Yeah. Yes, but he has passed away now. So because um, obviously Nakamoto went quiet and we haven't heard from him in a long time, many years. I believe the case is because he's already passed away and that's why we haven't heard anything. So that will be the person I would guess that it is. So like I, I, it's something that I've kind of touched on and people have different ideas as well, because now there is so much wealth with the crypto blockchain that when somebody has a will, what does the way of protecting it? Is there a kind of system that you know of that you would recommend people to do when, you know, unfortunately, if they get hit, hit by the number 10 bus in the morning? That's a really good question, because I think a lot of people struggle with this. Um because there's obviously you don't want to give your um, secret phrase away easily to people because you can be hacked. So how do you go about that? So I actually have like personally for me, um, I can't give the exact details, but give an idea. Um, I do have instructions for my parents of what to do um, and where to go in terms. And they have to do specific things and there is legal entities involved. It is in my will, but in order to actually access it, they'll be the only ones that can do it. And if they try to do it, I know I have full trust in my family, but if they were to try to do it um, now, I would be alerted of it. So there's these ways you can go around it. And I can't, <laughs> I know it's kind of very vague, but I don't personally want to give my course, exact thing yeah. just for security reasons. But it's kind of a mix between getting legal entities involved, so you're covered on a legal basis, but still having the physical seed phrase somewhere, but there's it can be split up into different sections and there's different parts you have to do to achieve. And you can just give your family, you don't have to tell them anything in particular because um, unless your family is, understands crypto, um, my family is aware, my dad does invest in crypto, I invest for him. But if something happens, it's basically just follow these instructions and then eventually it'll all make sense to them in the end. And because I know that you've done a blog on the different wallets as well. And like, I mean, the ledger is the ledger is the one that I use, but I know that's the tre Trezor. Trezor is that, yeah, Trezor. Correct. And yeah, so which ones you kind of recommend and the different ones, if you've tried ones that you think didn't serve you? Um, so I believe in having multiple wallets. I have four ledgers. Um, four ledgers. I don't have a Trezor just because I love Ledger and I should have a Trezor. I also have many hot and cold wallets. Um, so I've got my hot wallet, sorry, the cold wallets are the ledgers, but I have many hot wallets, different types. I spread my funds across all of them. And I also do have a multi-sig. So I require to actually have different passwords to actually access even my ledger, I have to go through a multi-sig process, which has a separate password on top of my ledger. So they all kind of combine just for extra layers of security um, because I have been hacked in the past. So I'm very well aware of um, security. I learned my lesson. And like, do you want to go into detail of what happened? Because, you know, of course. I, I know that a lot of my guests, you know, they've, they've, yes. they've been hacked. So I'd love to. I'd love to. So basically, I have been very good with security. My security is 
extremely good even before i got hacked however um one time i just kind of had my legs up on my table um i was in a discord group um discord community and it was with a project and one of the moderators posted a giveaway and i just automatically i didn't think anything of it my legs were up i was listening to music i was watching youtube by two monitors i was like oh great a giveaway i'm just going to enter it so i clicked the link and then it was like it asked me to do a transaction and i wasn't paying attention too much at the time and i was kind of just watching something and i did the transaction and then it just clicked in my head um it was asking to withdraw my ethereum and then it clicked in my head i just had done it and i was like Oh no. And then it started asking for my other access to my other tokens. Thankfully I had a ledger and multi-sig, so it stopped it after one and it had to ask me again, but I lost a lot of money. Um, I certainly did. And I would highly suggest that if you're in discord, especially because that's how I was done or telegram, if there is a giveaway and especially if it's time sensitive, like, Oh, you've got to do it in like five, 10 minutes. They're trying to, basically capture you with your pants down. So the best thing you can always do is just wait it out. I know you've got the fear of missing out, um, FOMO, we all get it, I had it. Um, just take the extra couple of minutes and just wait it out. Just wait it out, see what the community says. Um, you really have to be careful. Normally with giveaways, you would never have to normally approve a transaction, especially, especially if it's asking to withdraw your funds. Just be aware of that. Um, don't fall for the same mistake I did. It was a very um, stupid mistake on my behalf. I take full responsibility. Um, I should have been a lot smarter. I've learned my lesson. Very good. Now, like with the Discord, because a lot of people say, oh, Discord is the place to be. I stopped using it. It was a wreck in my head. And it was just so many scammers that are contacting you. It was like this... I mean, I don't really, like, with all my podcasts, it's kind of something I ask people about the social media because somebody's always one step ahead and tells you about something and you just don't know. You Usually I kind of get in at an early stage for the new ones. But the reality is everybody hates all the social media. But if I have to kind of line them up, Discord would be at the very end. It's like, I just hated it. Yeah, um, I, I understand that. So for Discord, there's one setting you have to put on. So, so number one setting is... You have to restrict people from direct messaging you. Anyone that direct messages you in Telegram, Discord, they're a scammer. Simple as that. There's no if or buts. 99.9% .9 of the time, they're a scammer. So if you can set settings um, and just, just block it and ignore it. And of course, in groups, if anyone's trying to get you to click links, I normally don't click links in Discord. Um, I stay away from links. If they talk about something, a project, I can always do my own research on it on the side. If I'm not familiar with a project, I won't even just waste my time with it unless it's on CoinGecko or something like that. Um, I have the complete understanding of the scams, but it's the same with Twitter as well. It's like if you type in MetaMask anywhere in Twitter, you're going to be bombarded by MetaMask support impersonators and they're trying to scam you. There is no such thing as MetaMask support. I can't stress that enough. The only MetaMask support that there is, is just their website and it's an FAQ and that's all it is. There is no one to talk to. So just be aware of that as well. Because like in the crypto world, it's like Twitter seemed to be the, the go-to place that everybody was kind of using. But what I've noticed since Elon's takeover and since it's called X now, is it's more negative than CNN. When you go into it, it's just, it's unreal, the negativity that you see there. It's not a place where you want to be. And I, I don't know, is there settings on that that you can just stop what you want to see? But the reality is, like, it's a strange place where we're kind of getting people to come into because the thought process, no matter what you're doing, I mean, I don't like looking at these things. Sometimes I do it because I have one podcast exposing fraud and corruption. But you just go in and you see something. And before you know it, you're actually going down the rabbit hole that you didn't really want to. And I don't think <laughs> people in the crypto world wanted to be in that kind of space. No, no. But this is the problem with like anonymity. It's like everyone, most people, it's like when you can hide your face, and um, this goes for everything in life, you can hide your face. A lot of people can become a different person. They've got their second persona. 
and they'll go down, they'll create these rabbit holes. Some do it obviously for the kick of it. Some really believe it. Um, and for us in crypto, we're definitely not immune to it as well. There are many people in crypto, which uh, like to be anonymous and they post some really bad stuff as well. Um, I just had a couple of them today. Um, about an hour ago, I was going through my Twitter and I saw someone who was like, it, it's bad. I mean, it's rough. Um, so it is a scary place, but hasn't the internet just always, it seems like every year with the internet, it comes a little bit more of a scary place in, in some senses. So. Yeah, definitely. And like, have you figured out how to navigate Reddit? Because I haven't managed to be allowed to post anywhere with that. But with the Polish one, I go into Polish groups and they kind of are a bit supportive. But that seems to be a bit of a minefield as well. And unfortunately, I don't like places where you don't know who the person is. They all have these kind of names and you're just looking at a graphic and everything, which in turn allows these people to be abusive instead of, like, say, the likes of LinkedIn. It's very professional because you see the person, you know everything about them, they give their details and it tends to doesn't yeah. attract the negativity. Yeah, I think Reddit's the worst. I think Reddit would be number one for me. Um, so Reddit is, I think the, well, you've got 4chan as well, but Reddit's one of the originators for being anonymous. And um, for example, the country I'm currently living in is Georgia, a beautiful country. I love it. Um, but 20, over, it's about 20 to 25% of this country is occupied by Russia. Um, there was a war about 10 to 12 years ago here, they invaded Georgia. And especially after this Ukrainian war, um, a lot of the Russians, because we're just below Russia, um, have come into fleeing from Russia into Georgia. So if you look on Reddit, especially in the Georgian communities, it's not a place you want to look through. It's very, it's a very nasty place um, because they're anonymous. And of course there is history, but the anonymous, like just being that, factor of being anonymous just really makes it a hundred times worse so i try to stay away from that one as well but i sometimes peek my head in for a couple of minutes and then i'm very quickly out very good. so let's get into the the token metrics like i mean I, i've kind of navigated through it and it, there was a few video a, a, ian balina is the the founder i believe yeah i, I don't know is that the way ian balina correct yeah but I, yes like you know, they've got uh, fantastic videos on YouTube and just explaining a lot of things. He seems to be very transparent. And one of the things that I, that I was seeing is just how he was tracking was looking at the engineers, like, you know, looking at Polygon and all the other ones and just kind of seeing the engineers that were leaving and everything, you know. So obviously you're tracking everything to make sure that basically the investors are making money which in turn then they just keep reinvesting in actually in the platform that's kind of the, the purpose of like that you're looking at so many kind of metrics yeah sure um i'll give you even a bit further backstory about ian Bellina. so ian Bellina actually turned twenty thousand dollars into five million dollars in a year so he did this using he had a spreadsheet and he was a this was before his company token metrics was created he had a spreadsheet which he followed um, it was basically an analytics, analytical driven approach, which hadn't been done before in terms of the knowledge. So everyone started wanting access to this spreadsheet. So he then created, um, basically gave it away and he had over 1 million um, downloads for this spreadsheet. So he decided to take it one step further and create token metrics. So token metrics is, so basically what we do is we're a research and analytics platform in cryptocurrency. And we make, we leverage AI and machine learning to help traders and investors make better decisions. So it's obviously with cryptocurrency, it can be very complicated. Um, and basically what is designed by um, our whole team is to make it very simple. So we've got simple education. Um, we've got many features. Um, we can go over them in a bit, but we've got many features is to help you trade and invest but the research is something um which um you had touched on is a really big part so we've got tokens such as like bitcoin and ethereum so ethereum for me personally ethereum has run its course it is still a great i know this is very controversial um please don't put me on the stake <laughs> but um i think ethereum is the myspace of crypto i think it's outdated it's clunky 
it does it does its job but when the bull run happens and you're paying four hundred dollars for a trans a swap you're not going to like it it's what happened last bull run um it's not fixed of course there are layer twos and the money has already been made in ethereum will it do well in the next bull run yes but the bigger question is what is the next ethereum if ethereum is the myspace what is the facebook that's the question people should be asking but people are so so attached to ethereum realize and not realizing that it's actually holding cryptocurrency back so what token metrics does for our research section is we give you that information of what are the upcoming tokens that could replace ethereum that could replace it could be like a v chain so v chain is in the supply industry so we have a lot of great information on the research section and like uh, I, I see as well that you kind of touch on the NFT space as well. So you might kind of explain exactly what you're doing in that. Yeah, so we definitely are a part of the NFT space. Um, we look into it all the time as well. We also do have our own NFTs. Um, our own NFTs are one of the only utility-based NFTs that are out there. So we're not just a profile picture. And we have our Astrobots. They're called Astrobot Society please be very if you'd like but it gives lifetime access to our platform so if you own one of them they have different plans attached to them you get lifetime access to token metrics which is huge um we really are very because we're a very transparent company we are a u.s regulated company so we do have to follow regulations and we believe that that's giving as much value and insights and being at the forefront of cryptocurrency so we live and breathe it so of course when nfts are a big thing and they're still a big thing even though they've been a bit quieter recently um we wanted to really provide value and not just be a like a profile picture nft and like you mentioned the utility there like for lifetime access or whatever is there a specific platform that you're using and recommend or is it kind of everywhere like the open sea and everything and the reason that i'm asking that is there was a time I was buying one and there was a bit of fraud going on, I think both on the sellers and the open sea side, but there was a utility and that was the reason that I was bidding on it. And then the people that bought it, whatever way that they organized this, it was a, a painting with, with a decent utility, but you never knew when you were buying it, where you get the utility or had they used it. And I'm just curious with your one, if somebody sells it on, is there a way of knowing that? Yeah, sure. So as long as it's part of our official group, so we do have OpenSea, we're on Blur as well. Um, but as long as it's a part of our collection and it is official, doesn't matter if someone sells you because we don't own them. We're not in control of them. They're third parties. They're individuals like yourself. I own one. Um, it, like even though I work for the company, I have a free subscription. I still own one. Um, that is basically if you if I was to sell it towards you. You just buy it and immediately that second you buy it, you can just go onto our platform and just sign in directly using that NFT. And the person that sold it then no longer has access. Is that the way? They no longer have access. All the all the data is delete, everything is gone. And then you just get a fresh new one and you can just use use it. And it's really incredible. Um, it was a very hard thing to achieve, um, especially with it's not it wasn't quite heard of. Some people are starting to do it now, but we're definitely one of the first, if not the first. So it was a hard thing to achieve, but just having that access of buying an NFT and then just logging into a platform. So I personally believe that there is a good chance in the future that real estate will probably be done through like an NFT like form of system rather than getting all this paperwork. Like um, I bought this apartment, for example, here. So doing all the paperwork and it's just a real big pain. It's I think in the future, NFTs will definitely have a big part of that to help. I mean, if I could just transfer an NFT and it proves ownership, that's a lot simpler. Um, so there are definitely some really good use cases coming up for NFTs. Yeah, like that's something that I like I'm hoping for because 
like I, I'm Irish, as we kind of discussed prior to recording. And, yes. you know, when you're buying properties in Ireland, it takes months and the, the solicitors are playing tennis just just to charge you more money. And then I come to Poland and like if you were selling me your property, we both go to the place. Obviously, you get the documentation beforehand, but it's kind of done there and then. And it was like a 10 yes. times or 100 times better system. And the reality is it would even be better if you said, hey, I've got this. And I'm interested in buying it and it's just done. You've got full documentation that it's yours based on, you know, the blockchain technology. And I think that's where it's fantastic. And also for artists as well, because I mean, I see so much corruption going on all through the years where the artist gets, you know, the the, the, the crumbs on the table and, you know, the, the, the distributors are taking all the money and like that will take that away from them as well. And the right, you know, the artist will actually get most of the money and then, you know, they can do like uh, the different uh you know, royalty split, whatever way it works. But I, I can see it working. But the problem was it got a knock because there was so much scammers out there. A lot of people got excited. And I know you wrote lovely blogs on this as well. So you might just talk on the different scams that have happened, but I still believe in it. I, I'm i convinced that it's the way forward. Yes. So um, in terms of the biggest scams, so especially in crypto, there's one number one scam. It's always been it. Phishing scams is the worst one. Phishing scams is what most people fall for. Um, so what a phishing scam is basically, it's kind of what I just fell for, what I told you earlier on. It's basically a malicious link, someone impersonating someone, they get a link, they get access to your account, they drain your wallet. That's the most common one. Um, that is the one everyone will bump into at some point if you're in cryptocurrency you are going to experience someone trying to give you a phishing link to get your information to take everything then obviously you have the other ones where it's like the secret phrase so people are trying to get your secret phrase so they just ask you they pretend to be support and they get your secret phrase and they um, take all your money that's another big one they're probably the two biggest ones um, to keep an eye out for um, there's obviously there's another one. They kind of sub, kind of like sub categories of phishing scams of tokens, which are malicious contracts. So you have malicious contracts without getting too much in the weeds, which are basically designed to just take all your money. And then the big other one is the rug pulls. Um, it's not quite a, it's a scam in a different sense is where you put your money into something and you get rug pulled. I've been rug pulled probably 20 times in my time but this is part of my investment strategy i expect to be rug pulled if you're playing a high risk high return um, game like myself you're praying like you're playing the i know some of these are going to go to zero but it only takes one and especially for like nfts in the last bull run i got in that trend very early on sorry moving away from scams but I got in that trend very early on and I played the high risk return of I will get in on pre-release um, NFTs and I'll get whitelisted so I can mint the NFTs and I'll hope for a rare one. So I would just go for about 10, 20 different NFTs and I'll just mint. A lot of them didn't do well, but there was one um, at the end, especially it was, I think it was the last one I got. Um, I minted three NFTs for about $150 and I sold them for over $30,000. Wow. So that's kind of the high risk, high return strategy. Like I personally do, but you expect to be rug pulled and like have that happen to you. If you go down, it's this, the way I invest though is not for 99% of people. It is very high risk, but I don't get excited for a 20x in crypto. That's not what I get excited. If something's up, if something up is up in my portfolio today, it's up 30%. I'm like, I know it sounds very bad, but that's kind of when you're so desensitized in crypto, um, it just gets like that. So and with like the most of the platforms when you're logging in Coinbase and all that. A lot of them, they want to kind of know your customer, so you have to give them information. I get the passport thing, but a lot of people that are kind of in this world are digital nomads. They don't have an address, and they look for a billing address, and they kind of make it a bit difficult for a lot of people. Is there a way to hate, navigate that? I hate KYC. I was, I was in Turkey um, last week, and I wanted to cash out some crypto. I was in a different country. 
So then I realized because I'm in Turkey, it picked up my IP. I even tried to use a VPN and they were still picking it up. Um, and basically they said, you're in Turkey. We can't cash out there. So I had this huge process. I had to go through like five different new exchanges that tried to work on Turkey. And then they go, oh, you can buy crypto, but you can't sell crypto. Yeah, that's the strange thing, isn't it? So this is where they get you. I I understand why they need to do it for regulation, but they try. I feel like they try to make your life so difficult. And anytime you look at a centralized exchange, because that's normally the off ramp. So that's normally where you sell your crypto. Try to find where to sell crypto on an exchange. They will hide it in the hardest spots to find, but they'll put the big buy crypto at the very top. Like you can buy a crypto, trade it, because that's how they get their money through the fees. But when the second you want to withdraw, they will make it so difficult. And I, I mean, honestly, I wish I had some better answers, but especially with my lifestyle in between countries, I don't have an Australian address anymore. So I'm, it's a bit more difficult for me. Um, You can use, especially, I'm not sure about Poland. I'm sure Poland will have them, but um, here in Georgia, there are definitely a lot of cryptocurrency stores. Um, You can just walk in and you can just basically do a transaction over the counter sort of thing. The fees are normally pretty high, but you can just walk in. Okay. I'll send you this and you give me, in money, I always just do it in lower transactions so they don't take all my money and leave because it's not quite fully regulated here per se. I know some countries um, are. So that is another option um, you can definitely look into. This is a header. You change it. Uh, and with the ATM machines in Poland, and once it doesn't exceed a thousand, and I mean, you can do a lot of them. So like, but still it's kind of, and yeah, it might take 10 minutes for the transaction and it's a fairly simple process once you understand it. So there is ways of doing it, but it just, it frustrates me. It's like, yeah, I can buy yeah. anything I want, but when I want to do it, reverse it, oh, no, 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 we need a million things from you. Yeah, it, it's a pain. I think regulation will help this in the long run is when people make it, because I mean, I'm not big in the stock market personally. Um, that's not my thing. I'm crypto. Um the returns for me aren't quite there. Obviously, being crypto, the returns are much higher typically, not always. Um, but it's, it's a lot easier there to do things, I find. Um, there is KYC as well. But for me, I just find it much more difficult because normally in like this, like you can go to one place and just get things done. Um, for crypto exchange, you, like if you're in my situation, you try one, it doesn't work. You got to try another, you got to try another. And then you spent like the whole day just trying to find one and none of them work for what you're trying to actually like off ramp. It's just difficult. So I think regulation, which will clarify things um, depending on the country, because obviously every country has specific exchanges they normally work with very tightly. Um, so in Australia, Binance was pulled out. Um, so you can't do things. So it's just always up and down. It's just we just need some clarification just to really make things easier for the investors to get in crypto and get out. And just on the Binance as well, because uh, there was a thing that I spotted on that I was kind of navigating and it was like the reporting, you know, proving the accounts was signed by the company and not by an individual. So it had, so that means it's not valid. <laughs> and this is yeah, Binance. That... You know, like, it's like when I look at this, it's like, I don't know if there are anything you can kind of trust, to be honest with you. I know that's so scary. Um, Because... Everyone's really concerned about, especially after FTX, right? So they had the FTT token, and that was obviously pretty much leveraged against like, with Alameda Research, basically using the customer funds from FTT token. And they were basically like, oh, look at the money we have in FTT token. But it wasn't really, so they're just leveraging that token. So it's kind of, people are very concerned with Binance doing the same thing, Um it's definitely a possibility. There is a lot of shady things uh, I'm sure are going on in a lot of exchanges. Binance, there we're still waiting on some answers from things, but they still always chug along. They've always kind of been under the spotlight, but they always chug along. But the question is, is there going to be that breaking point or is it kind of like um, USDT? So with Tether, everyone for forever, it's this is going to collapse and it just never does. It always seems to keep ticking. So is it a ticking time bomb or is it that they've got things, is it holding up an economy? Uh, maybe is it holding the U S 
economy. Like we don't know a lot of these things are happening in the background and maybe it's for good reason. Maybe there are some things which that's happening in the background, which is keeping them alive, but it's protecting possibly governments. We don't know. So <laughs> it's really hard to work all these things out. Um, we just got to be very careful and <laughs> mitigate our risk. Definitely. And like, I mean, you, for those watching on Spotify or BitChute, Rumble or YouTube, you'll see my, you know, five podcasts in the background. And I, but I see you've got seven, that there was seven podcasts. I don't know if they all active because I was looking at some. You've got the to Token Metrics Live, the 100 show. There's a, there's a lot of them there. I've got the list of them there. But I'm just curious, what, what was the reason for having like so many? Sure. So because we do so many different things, so we have an analytics platform, which is the most used thing. So the analytics platform is basically helps traders. We basically have like bull and bear signals on charts. So it's basically essentially people refer to them as buy and sell signals. So that is one of the big things we do on our analytics platform. So it just makes your life easy. If you want to trade, trading is difficult. You can just follow our bull and bear signals. We have an AI that uses over a hundred different data points, puts it together and just makes life very easy. So we have that section, we have an investor section that's um, a bit different, but then we have the research section and the research section comes under what you're talking about. So we have all these podcasts. So we talk about different things. So the hundred X show, um, everyone wants the next hundred X token. Like that's what we all want. We all want the, the next Ethereum, so that's what the 100X show is designed to do. Our CEO, Ian Bellina, will speak to founders um, of projects which have the potential to 100X. So we had one with a um, project called Joystream. So here's a little bit of alpha for um, your community. So Joystream is very low cap. It's a newer project, but it's basically being competitor to YouTube in a sense. And we're very excited about it. We had them on. Um, that definitely has the potential to do 100x. So that's kind of the things that that show in particular does. And then we have other shows talking about the market, um, what to look forward to. We have a premium webinar, um, which talks about what our, a lot of alpha, what our VC is doing. We do have a VC. So what we're buying, what we're selling, what are the trends, a lot of exciting things. So we're just so spread out because we have so much content to give. So we really just want to get it, give it and if you're not interested in one thing, you're probably interested in something else. I think uh, a competitor to YouTube. I know there's BitChute, Rumble and everything, but the, there's nobody that's actually kind of taking them on as they should. And they are so slimy. I mean, I got kicked off with my Awakening podcast and I was like, show me where I was wrong. No, you just get a, cu a cut and paste kind of reply. And I seen like, so now I put all my stuff on my kind of Roy Collin channel as such. And I put the five podcasts on that. And lots of times I see it going backwards, 500. The crypto one that I have, it went back. And just, you're just looking at it, then it just stopped growing. Like, and, you're, and like the Polish one, that was always doing well. That has like 1.2 million views. And then I decided, okay, I want to give a push on this. So I paid. It was the worst thing I did. Like, cause like an episode that might get four or 500, now it gets 100. So the, yeah. it's like they're as slimy as you get. So anybody that takes them out. And I think once people realize, hey, this company is actually better, because even a lot of people think you'll make a load of money on YouTube. When I monetized the Polish one for 400,000 views, I got about four four hundred dollars. <laughs> so wow. You, uh, yeah, yeah. But if you had to advertise on that, you wouldn't you'd be paying more than four hundred thousand. You know, so it's like, it's like 0 0.005 is I think is their payout, which is terrible. Like, is it the reality is, you know, I don't expect it to be a 50, 50, but I mean, you'd expect it to be at least 10% or something like that. Like, and it's a fraction that they're paying out. But that's, that's the problem when they've got the monopoly of the market, they can just do whatever they want. So, I mean, we've got competitors like Rumble, which is trying, um, Rumble. I mean, I use it occasionally. It's that's the uncensored version of obviously youtube um you've got some big names on there which have moved there um so i think russell brands on there i mean you've got the tate brothers which are banned from youtube um you've got um, i think steve will do it's another big youtuber which was kicked off youtube so they've all moved over there but the thing with rumble is which is great it's uncensored but that's the selling point which is nice but 
it still hasn't, but it's not quite there. So we're still waiting for the next thing. I just don't think the narrative of just having an uncensored kind of where you can say what you want is enough. I think people are wanting something new. So I think the Web3 narrative will come by. Um, and I think that will be the one that might, obviously there are definitely a couple which are trying to do it. Um, we're just waiting on one of them to kick off. And when it does, especially if it happens in the bull run, which we would expect it to, maybe that push with all the hype around crypto and they that go, this is the future. Maybe that's the time where YouTube's market share starts to dwindle and the competitor really rises up to stop the monopoly. And just uh, finally, Marcus, like you've got the AI and you've got the bots as well. Obviously you're tracking everything you're doing. You the system i mean you can just by looking at the website you know that it's like that ian has created something incredible but like with the ai so now you've got like a, a bot and stuff like that so it, it like is because and i've seen it on a few where they're kind of saying don't give your personal information is it a case like with the ai because there's people talking about like that you can kind of personalize something and everything is that the kind of plan for that or is it just kind of just an open source kind of ai system that you're using that's kind of general like the other ones so uh, is if this is in reference we have a chat bot so yeah. this is a new product yes so we have a chat bot and this is free to use as well um we have a free account so you can go free account and use it but basically what the chat bot is designed to do is uses our analytical data from our platform so if you find the platform uh, maybe a little bit too complicated or you don't want to do heavy research. You just want to know what the next 100x token is. You can just type to the chatbot, what is the next 100x token? It will give you a list of tokens that our platform registers as potential to do 100x. If you want to trade something, you can just type in what is a good crypto to trade and it will give you the answer using our platform. So that is something that's really exciting and we're going to roll it out to Telegram and Discord as well. So you're able to actually add the bot to your Telegram or Discord group, as well as we have trading functions in, incoming soon. So you'll actually be able to trade with that bot as well. So that is really exciting. And we can't wait for people to see that because it's going to be a game changer. Um, definitely try the chat bot. It's great. Um, it makes your life a lot easier and it's free as well. You don't have to pay a single dollar. No, so why I was not? Using it nothing I was like, to yeah, I was like, Oh, this is cool. And it was telling me things I didn't know. So it was brilliant. But I mean, listen, totally enjoyed the conversation. And I encourage people to check out the website because, and, and your blog, because you write a lot of the articles as well. It's fantastic. There's incredible information, even about hot gold wallets, a lot of stuff. So for those that are kind of just, get getting off the, the fence and trying to get in there because there's a lot of people that still don't understand anything i think that what you're providing is fantastic like just to simplify you know the, the could you call it complex maybe maybe not but the way you're doing it is brilliant so you might let people know where can they find you yeah. awesome thank you so much for the compliment as well so you can find us at www.tokenmetrics.com so t-o-k-e-n m-e-t-r-i-c-s dot com and then you can just you'll come to our platform on our page and just create a free account simple as that okay. yep and make sure i put the link board on the audio on the video thank you very much marcus awesome thank you so much no problem so that's all for the crypto podcast you'll find all our episodes on the crypto podcast.org until next week take care so i hope you enjoyed this week's podcast You'll find everything about me on bio.link forward slash podcaster with all my podcasts and you'll find it you see in the QR code in the graphic that's shown. I'd like again to thank my sponsors. So if you or someone you know struggling with anxiety and want to know how to be 100% anxiety free six weeks without therapy or drugs, Daniel Packard's Anxiety Solution Program company offers a six-week system that permanently solves anxiety at an astounding 90% success rate. People who join the program only pay at the end once they have clear, measurable results. If you're interested in learning more, go to permanentanxietysolutions.com where you can book a free consultation with Daniel. Do you fight blood pressure and or want to get off the meds? Doctors are amazed at what Zona Plus can do. You can get a $50 discount with my code Roy, zona.com slash discount slash Roy. And you'll see it in the QR code as well as Daniel's QR code. 
quality manufacturer of metal products for telecommunication and workshop equipment and other metal materials. You see the brochure there in the QR code. And let me know if you would like a quotation shipped internationally at very competitive price. I'd like to thank all my sponsors and also all my listeners. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Five star rating, share with your friends. Really helps. And I also have a video on how to give a five star rating because a lot of people have wrote to me asking me that they don't know how to do that. Until next week, take care.